I'm Andy Rash, the technical trainer for DMAG Cranes and Components. This is our first video on the DMR wire rope hoist, so I want to give you an overview of all the features found on this hoist. The model we'll look at first here is the Generation 1 from 2016 until around 2020. The most distinguishable feature of the DMR hoist is the ability to have dual wheel drive for better traction by the addition of a belt and also less wheel wear, the primary drive wheel. The belt is tensioned with a tensioner and we have to check belt tension with a special tool. This is the belt tensioning tool. We simply choose the center of the belt and press down and let the needle engage until the button under my finger clicks and acts like a clutch and gives out, we take the gauge reading on the scale and we're looking for 650 newtons. The next important design feature and improvement of previous designs that I'd like to point out is the thrust rocker and the hub on the thrust rocker. Notice it is pushed and kept next to the trolley side sheet by a clamp. Also, Another clamp is located here on the traveling side sheet. There's no longer spacers put across the load pin. The hub of the thrust rocker is a C shape, which allows the two halves of the scissors to come together around the load pin. No longer requiring pulling the drive unit off the load pin to change a thrust rocker. This is the new wraparound design. Please note the white cable tie used as a secondary drop stop on the thrust rocker halves. Please note that it comes installed as the two halves come in its package and please retain it and keep it as a drop stop. Do not cut it off. Also, while we're here looking at this angle, notice the grub screw for locking the trolley side cheek to the load pin. From this angle, please note, this is the ZBB lifting motor. We have a dedicated video for that showing the brake adjustments that will be in the series. I will move the cladding plate to reveal the drum. And notice, we're using the traditional design of clamps holding the rope to the drum. From this angle, we can see our primary trolley motor. The position to add a second trolley motor is an option for dual drive as a secondary option to the belt. And third, this is the control panel, and I've disconnected power so I can show you the internal features specific to the Generation 1 hoist. What you'll find in particular in a Generation 1 hoist is a logo, which is used for an anti-jogging timer. A TCQMZ, which is an overload device that's connected to an electronic overload pin called an EOD. You'll find a Vectron inverter that's in the DE Drive series, 2 amp typically, without a blue fascia plate to make it easier to close the panel door. That will require the special base plate when using a KP500 keypad to connect to it. There are videos for that that you can watch on our channel. These are the infamous relays that sometimes have caused problems for our hoist over the years. Please read the attach downloads and you'll see a sheet with our recommendations if you have a relay issue. Notice also that we use a filler plate with a knockout to bring a grommet with the cable through the wall of the panel and then we terminate to plugs or terminal strips inside the panels. This avoids the use of external plugs which can deteriorate and loosen over years of use. We will also include a download that gives you troubleshooting advice for checking the logo, the overload device, and the brake monitor switch. I hope you 
removing this cover to reveal the SGG4 geared limit switch. There will be a special video for the setting of SGG4 limit switches in the series. Our SGG4 limit switch gets input from the rotation of the drum by a crown gear under this cover. The cover is to primarily keep wiring from ever fouling with the gearing. There's a specific adjustment procedure for turning these single screws for a slow down stop upper limit and a slow down stop lower limit. This view of our hoist also shows us the addition of a bar activated switch which can be mounted above the upper emergency limit switch. This is a close up of the optional added bar limit switch activated by the bottom block if for some reason it would pass by the S1 emergency limit switch of the geared SGG4 limit switch. If your hoist is equipped with safe control, there will be an encoder reading necessary from a pulse wheel internally located in the coupling chamber between the face of the ZDV lifting motor and the gearbox. This sensor fits in this hole, easily accessible and easily troubleshot, but only found on safe control and not a part of contact. This concludes our first video in the DMR Generation 1 series. Please look for other videos on the brake and on the gear limit switch.